Welcome back, everyone. With Martin Luther King Jr. weekend upon us, we are learning more about a local man who played a huge part in ending segregation in schools across the country. His name was Lloyd Gaines. His story is fascinating, but his fate is a complete mystery. Here to tell us more is celebrity historian Rafi Andonian, who has a real knack for uncovering these kind of off-the-radar stories about people we should know about, but we don't. Welcome back to the show. Nice to have you here. Well, thank you. Talk about a Vashon High grad. How about that? A, Vash a local guy who then, at some point down the road, applies for law school at Mizzou. Now, this is in the 1930s, 30s. right? Yes. So pick up the story of Lloyd Gaines there, yeah, and then so, what happened? So, so he, gra he graduates Vashon High School in 1931. Okay. He goes first to college at Harris Stowe, which is Harris Teachers College, or Stowe, at Stowe Teachers College at the time. Okay. And then he goes to Lincoln University over in Jefferson City. Mm -hmm. He majors in history, by the way. You know the celebrity historian likes that. <laughs> that's, uh -huh. <laughs> and that's how he gets to the law school, trying to apply to University of Missouri Law School in Columbia. Remember, UMSL doesn't exist then. So you, he's applying to law school in Columbia at the University of Missouri. Okay. And at first, Registrar kind of rejects that, and then, he, well, doesn't want to make a decision, kind of lets it die, but then they force the decision. He's going to law school, though, because he has been really successful as a student, and he wants to do something in law. He was valedictorian at Vashon High, for wow. example. Mm -hmm. He was on a debate team, all kinds of accomplishments. Even though he started behind in elementary school, he caught up quickly. And so that's how he gets to law school and applies and gets rejected. Of course, that ends up to be a court case. Right, because he basically checked all the boxes. I mean, he met every qualification that every other student they were admitting to Mizzou at the time did, except for the color of his skin. And That's he right. says, this isn't right, so he takes it to the courts, and then, then what happens? That's right, so what Mizzou says is the state constitution doesn't allow us to let you in, because the state constitution had mandated segregation. Right. So he goes to court with the NAACP, eventually ends up in the Supreme Court of the United States, and the Supreme Court of the United States says, well, according to Plessy versus Ferguson, which is the famous case that establishes separate but equal, separate that but phrase, equal. separate but equal, right. remember that's a law of the land at the time, mm -hmm. you have to create a separate law school for him. Now, Mizzou doesn't want to create a separate law school for one guy, right. so what they do is they go ahead and they say, we'll create, the state legislator does, now remember, the Supreme Court sends it back to the state, so the state legislator says, we will create a se separate law school at Lincoln University, which is the only black university mm -hmm. in the state at the time. Mm -hmm. We'll fund it, and then Lincoln University needs to figure this out. Right? Which fulfills their obligation Which under the law. Their we, we've given you an option to attend law school. Now, what happens from there, what's really fascinating is that it goes back then from the state to the county, Boone County, who has to then evaluate if this school is actually going to be separate, it, it, that separate is actually equal. So it's, all, it's a mess. The wow. courts are going back and forth between the county, the state, the Supreme Court. And eventually what happens is in trying to establish and trying to understand this. Now, remember, that's a way kind of out of actually having to do that at Mizzou, right? right, right. So in that process, trying to create a law school in eight months at Lincoln University, they start to do depositions to see, is this actually equal? Mm. NAACP lawyers and others are doing this. And that's when Lloyd Gaines, when they look for him to say, do you consider this equal? He's gone. They can't he find him. And literally has never been heard from again. He's literally, we don't know what happened to him. We have no idea. He went up to Chicago and vanished for, in Chicago. What a remark. I mean, unbelievable. So what's his lasting legacy? What, what can we take away from his legacy Lloyd is Gaines? huge because yeah. that court case is one of a series in the Supreme Court mm -hmm. is one of a series of court, uh, court cases that chips away at separate but equal and eventually leads to Brown versus Board of Education. Right. What you see here, yep. the U.S. Mint created a commemorative coin recently, a bronze metal coin in honor of Brown versus a Board of Education, which of course desegregated schools in 1954. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. it's 15, 14 years after this case. Right. But uh, that is what the, the Lloyd Gaines case sets the precedent among a couple of others that forthcome. Sure. But Brown, the Lloyd Gaines case is cited in the Brown wow. v. Board of Education um, decision. Now, another legacy that he has is within a few years, in the 1940s, there is a movement to change the state constitution to no longer mandate segregation. It's still the constitution we use today, which is really interesting. And you know who follows suit on that? St. Louis University and Washington University in St. Louis both integrate after that state constitution. Mizzou wow. didn't until 1950. But the two schools here, they'll go ahead and do so. So Lloyd Gaines, a pivotal stepping stone along the way to the state constitution and national law. I told you, this guy, it's, they're fascinating stories. Rafi, thank you so much. Thank we you. appreciate it. We're going to post this segment at camelv.com slash great day right after the show.